These two boxes of Rallyman are jam-packed with possibilities, and it's my intention to highlight all of the interesting things you can do with them. This is Shakedown. In today's Shakedown, we take a race car to a rally stage and bring a rally car to a racing circuit as we explore the crossover dashboards. This is the Renault 8 Gordini, a four-door family car that won the Tour de Course three years in a row in the early 1960s, seen here in V-Rally 2. Notable for rallying across the world, it features as the blue GT4 from Rallyman GT. The blue R4 of Rallyman Dirt is the Alpine A110, which, while also notable as a rally car, was originally built as a two-door sports car, as shown here in Enthusia, which isn't really a rally game, but has a dirt circuit to slide through nonetheless. Is there any way we can bring these two cars into each other's worlds to pit them against each other directly? V-Rally 2 has a circuit creator where we can cobble together a somewhat accurate recreation of the Enthusia circuit and set some times on it with an A110 and oh you mean in Rallyman? Yeah, that's even easier. We're heading into the Mystic Caveway today, a fictional dirt circuit where we can drift and slide around the place much like any other dirt stage. It's small enough, and the Rallyman tiles are versatile enough, that if we like, we could race this course on snow or asphalt, thanks to the 110% expansion, each offering a slightly different challenge than the other. But if we're combining cars from GT and Dirt, why not use GT tiles to make a GT circuit? Why not flip those tiles over to have a three-lane wide circuit? Why not make use of the GT expansions to make two more versions of the Mystic Caveway, again giving us their own challenges to face compared with each other? So we've got seven circuits to choose from, and I'm going to go with the dirt course and the three-lane GT course. Both are small enough for two-lap races, so let's pit two cars against each other over two laps on two different surfaces. Will we have two winners? On the dirt course, we'll be using the R4 and GT4R dashboards. The crossover dashboards from the RX expansion allow us to bring the cars from different versions of Rallyman into a new style of racing, with the GT4R dashboard allowing the GT4 cars to go rallying over multiple surface types. Similarly, on the asphalt circuit, we'll be using the GT4 and the R4 GT dashboards, with the latter allowing the R4 cars to go circuit racing in either the sun or the rain. I'll be controlling both cars directly, so there's no AI or NPCs here. No bumping and shunting is allowed, so that'll mean all overtaking will have to be done without putting a dent in your opponent's car. Given how easy it is to lose control in low gears in these cars, that will likely mean wanting to crash in places that make it difficult or impossible to be overtaken, should we lose control in the first place. The damage bags contain the relevant dice and green flag tokens, with weather tokens being included in the GT bag. Do you think the crossover dashboards will be nicely balanced, or does it just pay to have the right car for the job? There's only one way to find out. The R4 is going to kick things off in this race, and they are going to go one, two, coast all the way through with their coast eye, and end in a slide in this space, all being well. Now they are on the right tires and in the right machine to go flat out on a roll like this. So hoping for the best and getting a flawless set of dice. They show the GT4 how it's done. The GT4 wants to do something similar, however, with its leader dice instead of normal white coast dice, it's going to have a trickier time. So it wants to end there in third. Uh, does it have the confidence to go flat out on those dice? I don't think it does. Uh, the one is good, the two is good, one hazard, two hazards. Uh, does he want to end its turn there? Let's push it one more. Let's put it here. It wasn't built for drifting. The R4 is going to uh, break down to second gear and then coast through. And I think end in first, knowing that there are no full contact rules for the GT4 to push it out of the way. So they want to end in the hairpin. And they're going to go flat out again. Uh, unfortunately, get three hazards. That will put them in gear zero instead. No damage, but in terms of showing off what they're capable of, that wasn't the best. The GT4 
has an opportunity to generate a lot of focus. Uh, if they make use of as many sliding and drifting spaces as they feel comfortable, uh, they can roll those dice flat out to generate five focus. Just the one hazard, that was good for them. And then on the next turn, when they have to catch up to the R4, they can do the reverse and end in first gear, hopefully with another five focus. Two hazards on this occasion. They have learnt to slide like the best of them and generate lots of focus that they can use to secure some of these leader dice in future. The R4 gets to recover from its spin and it's going to go along as many spaces as it can. Uh, it doesn't have to end in a high gear, so it won't. Uh, one and a load of coasts. We'll put it here in first gear and get it another four focus. So the uh, GT4 hasn't been able to capitalize on the mistake thus far. Are they going to play the long game? Let's find out as the R4 tries to get as far away as it can. It can go there in gear four. Uh, let's go one by one. There's lots of focus to pay for dice. There's one hazard. There's two hazards. Might as well pay for those last two dice. GT4 wants to try to keep up. So they're going to go one, coast, 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 and then two. They want distance. Uh, they, again, have focus to pay for things. One is good, coast is good, as is that one. They could have gone flat out. A couple of hazards, missed opportunity there, as they end in second gear before the double hairpin. Next round, the R4 is running away with it. They are going to um, break down to second gear. And then coast around the outside of the corner. And they're going to emerge in fourth gear over there. That is their plan. And they can play it safe and secure a position as the GT4 continues to play catch up. One coast, coast, coast two, three, four, and hopefully they won't have too many dice to pay for. The one is good, coast is good, coast is good, coast is good, two is a hazard, three is good, so therefore whatever it rolls is fine. The R4 has gear one corner coming up, so they can break down to gear one and then come out in gear two towards the end of the first lap. Again, lots of focus to pay for dice. That's one hazard on the three. The breakdown to one was good and they finish in second gear. The GT4, they're going to Break down to second gear, drift around the outside and come up to fourth gear. Let's see how far they get. Hazard on the brake die and a hazard on their coast. So uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten focus. Do they have ten focus? They don't. They do, 10 focus, that's a lot to pay to secure fourth gear. Um, do they want to secure third gear instead? Let's keep some focus back. Let's just pay four 
these three dice and then finish in third gear, uh, they are going to be able to um, coast through like that, break down to first gear and then come out in second. They're going to go one by one and hope for the best. And it doesn't start off very well. Two hazards on a coast and a gear three. They can pay for that, but that's a lot of focus. And then they can risk the two, which they have successfully got. They emerge behind the R4, only to see it speed away into the distance. Three, coast, 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 break one, and into second. Gets them distance away from the GT4. Unfortunately, they start with a hazard and then break into a crash. They have given the GT4 a chance to catch up. So what can it do on this round? Let's see. Coast, coast, coast. Uh, two, three, four or one, two, three. One, two, three is gonna be safer, I think. Not much safer. I think they want to try to get some focus back. So they are gonna go flat out and hope for the best. Uh, it's not a good roll, but hopefully they can work something out with their result. Just the one hazard on first gear. They might have given their turn a little more thought to try to block the corner as the R4 breathes a sigh of relief and gets out of here pronto. One, two, coast, coast, coast. And a three is all they need. They can roll those flat out. They're not going to crash twice in a row. Just the one hazard. The R4 has a dominant lead. It's going to drop to second. Coast through. And I think for distance, end in third gear. In fact, it can then break down to first to end on the corner. Uh, lots of focus, not worth the risk, even though on these dice there's no risk. That three bounce a coast into a hazard. So we've got one hazard on the three and one hazard on the break. Not enough to lose control. The GT4 is going to break down to first gear, I think, and coast through. Emerging in third gear, uh, some focus, perhaps not enough. One is good, coast isn't, and definitely isn't. So, uh, three focus to pay for those last two dice. The R4, I think, is going to take this race. They are going to see the GT4 come up behind them in their mirror. Uh, I think the GT4 is going to risk that flat out. Three hazards, wasn't wise. And that is probably going to be the story of the race as the R4 wants to get away as far as possible. Two, three, four. Ending there in fourth. So much focus that they are going to roll one by one. Two hazards at the very end. Next round, they are going to break down to second gear. They are going to coast around the outside and end there in third. But I think to protect their lead, they might want to end in fourth in the sliding space. 
let's see how they go. They've got loads of focus. Uh, hazard on a coast, and the three is good, and the four was another hazard. As the GT4 does its best to finish, uh, coming here in fourth gear, might have been an opportunity to get the jump on the R4, but if you're going to roll a hazard on your first dice of the run, and then a hazard on your third, things aren't going to go quite your way. So they're going to pay for the coast die, risk the two, two is good, and they're going to pay for the three and the four. As we go into the final couple of turns, the um, R4 is going to coast, drop to first gear, coast, and then merge in second. And I think they have this in the bag. There was a hazard on the three and a hazard on the brake die. They've got loads of focus tokens to pay for the final two places. Can the GT4 affect things? I don't think it can. It's going to coast, break down to second, coast, coast, three, four. I don't think there is a way of engineering an overtake or a block. So we're just going to go flat out on these and say that the GT4 gave it its all as it does get around into fourth gear. But on the next round, the R4 is just going to roll a couple of coast die for the victory. The first race goes to the car designed for racing on the dirt. Will the home advantage continue as we head onto the asphalt? The second race then, and the cars are a lot closer in terms of their dice pools. Um, on this occasion, the only difference is that the R4 has one brake die and the GT4 has two. So GT4 is going to have to make the most of that difference in order to try and pull ahead. And it's going to start with a turn that hopefully Puts it all the way there in third gear. No hazards to worry about. What will the R4 do? I think that it's going to go up to fourth gear before the first corner. And hopefully do things a little differently. They're going to go flat out to get four focus. Two hazards on that roll as they use their one and only brake die to go down to second gear. Uh, they have to emerge in third to overtake the GT4, but then they can come out like that and end there in third gear, all being well. Uh, they will make use of the long space on the asphalt. I think they're gonna go flat out. Uh, they shouldn't have. They have got three hazards. No damage pull, but that will be a double zero. And this race may just have been decided already. What can the GT4 do to capitalize? It is going to break down to first gear and then coast on through. And then it can go up to third gear in that space and hopefully set itself up for a win. It's going to go flat out, hasn't learned the lesson of the R4, but it does its role better. Next round it's going to break down to first gear and put as much distance between it and the R4 as it can. Wants to again end in third gear in the middle to avoid the on track hazard. And let's go flat out. Nothing to worry about for the GT4 
as the R4 rejoins the track. Next round, breaking down the first gear. So far, the GT4 has only needed one of its brake dice. Um, again, once distance and can go into second. It's surely far ahead enough to uh, not worry about ending in a high gear. Just the one hazard on its dice. Five focus, its focus pool is huge. And we see what the R4 can do to keep up. So it's going to end in gear three. And I'm gonna go flat out on that roll. Try and get some focus. Uh, two hazards. As we go into the next round, they get to go again. Uh, they are going to coast, coast, coast. They have one brake die to put them down to first gear. And then out in second, up to third, and then on the inside in fourth gear. Uh, is the comeback on? They're going to roll one by one. Uh, their coasts are good, apart from that last one, making the first hazard of the roll. The gear one is its second hazard, and I think it is worth all the focus to secure those final three dice and hopefully put the pressure on the GT4 to maintain its lead. It's going to Drop into first, uh, coast on through, and then two, three, four. We'll see it end in the high gear that it needs. Uh, it has lots of focus to pay for it. So let's go one by one and see what needs to be spent. There is a hazard on the first coast. Two is good. Three and the four are good. We go into the next round and there needs to be some braking going on. I think it's time to get both brake dice to work. Uh, coast, coast, two, and then I think they can end, to be sure, in fourth gear. Uh, they will roll those one by one. Hazard on the first coast. Hopefully this break will be good. Two more hazards on the brake dice. A crash for the GT4 puts them in gear zero. But are they far ahead enough to not worry about the R4? The R4 is going to need to come out in third to break down to first, then use its coast die and gear two. That is as far up through the gears as it can get. Um, it wants to get there. So one by one, see how it goes. We are good for the braking, good for the coasting, and could have gone flat out as they have another turn to try and make things tricky for the GT4. Now, they have to drop down through the gears, and then if they emerge here in gear three, the uh, GT4 will be blocked. So let's see how they go. They are going to roll those flat out. They are feeling lucky. And it was a good choice. Just the one hazard as the GT4 can do nothing but turn over its gear marker. It is blocked. As the R4 gets another go, uh, breaks down to first, uses the long space to get to the corner, and then comes out. They don't want to be in gear four because they don't have the brakes for it. So they're going to end in gear three and they have focus to pay for it. So how far can they get? 
one is good. Coast is good, as is gear two. Could have gone flat out. The GT4 is going to have to end in fourth gear. Um, can it get anywhere near the corner? Yes, it can. So it can go two, three, four, and pip the R4 to uh, the corner. Uh, it's going to roll those one by one because it has focus to pay for anything that it needs to. Whoop. Although it's got one focus on the floor. Uh, three is a hazard, and the four is its second hazard, as it comes here alongside the R4. Next round, the GT4 is going to show what the brake dice can do, because this time they will not roll hazards. Uh, it's going to coast, coast, and then go, I think, up to fourth gear to make sure he gets turn order. Uh, let's see what happens on this occasion. One hazard on a brake die, coasts are good. Two is a hazard, and there is a mountain of focus tokens to pay for the last two dice. The R4 has to lose distance effectively. There's no point going up to fourth gear because they won't be able to break down to uh, meet the next corner. So they are just going to do something like that. Uh, they can go flat out on that. Uh, just the one hazard. Next round, the GT4 has a commanding lead. It's going to pull away as much as it can. Again, probably wants to keep the speed up because the R4 is a little closer than it perhaps would want. So it's going to do something like that, one by one. Hazard on the brake, hazard on the coast. It's got the focus to pay for it, so it might as well. One for the two, two for the three, and three for the four. And again, the R4 behind it won't be able to match that going into a gear one corner with only one brake. So it's going to have to do its best to end somewhere nearby, but not near enough. And they can go flat out on those as well. If they spin, they spin. There's no way of overtaking uh, two hazards. And they can only watch as the GT4 runs away for a victory, which should happen on this turn. Coast, 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 and then two. Would we'll put it over the line. Uh, all the focus in the world to pay for dice. Doesn't need to over the line for its victory. That, of course, means the advantage does stay with the car on home soil, or home asphalt in this case. But we can't leave things there at one all, can we? We need a tiebreaker. Welcome to the decider. I have turned the tiles over to their two lane wide variants and we have given the drivers dry tires in wet weather. So the R4 car is using leader dice, has one brake and three hazards for loss of control. The GT4 is still on coast dice, uh, one brake and two hazards before a loss of control. So it will be down to driver skill as to who gets around two laps of the decider in one piece. And I think that the R4 is going to go for distance. And getting a focus pull is mighty useful, but that's quite a risk for a flat out roll. You know what rally drivers are like. Careless. The GT4 behind them will hope to capitalize. However, with only two hazards before a loss of control, this is also a risky move for them. They're going to go flat out. And they've got no hazards for that turn. 
the GT4 wants to drop to first gear and then come out, I think, they're going to want to end in a high gear, so they're going to have to risk something like this and see how far they get. Two hazards for a loss of control. Uh, the one is good. One hazard on the coast. Is this going to be another hazard? It's not. Uh, I think they're going to risk the two. That's good. But they are going to pay for three and the four. And hopefully pressure the R4 into keeping pace as the R4 goes up through the gears and can emerge in fourth gear themselves. Um, they're going to go flat out on those. Just the one hazard on gear three puts them side by side as the GT4 breaks down to second gear and then I think probably coasts through and tries to get away in first gear. Do they want to go flat out to try and get a focus pool going? Uh, if they crash, it'll be in a low gear. So I think they're going to. Two hazards says they do. That will put them in gear zero, no damage. And they at least block the track just a little for the R4 car behind them, who also has to break, but they're going on to the leader dice. And the furthest they can get is here in first gear. Uh, they do have a focus pull and they are going to keep an eye on it as they go one by one. The second coast was a hazard. Uh, the one is good and their last coast is good. So uh, they are going to probably have to think about the hairpin at the end. Uh, do they want to come into it in second? I think if they go there, then they're going to force the GT4 to either take a hazard or go the long way. So I think that is their plan. That will put them there in second and they're going to go flat out. And unfortunately, lose control. The GT4 behind them has an opportunity to play things safe and take the lead back. So they are just going to go in first gear. They're going to go flat out because two hazards before a loss of control doesn't scare them, even though it absolutely should. Next round, they absolutely don't want to take an extra hazard for going into the inside from where they are. So they're going to go this way and go up to third gear. Um, I think they'll take the inside just in case turn order matters. So they're going to roll those and they're going to finally roll those one by one. Uh, hazard on the second coast. They have enough to pay for these three dice. Can the R4 respond? He doesn't want to go up to fourth gear because there's no way of breaking down. So just going to do something like that. And they too have decided that one by one is the way to go. Although they could have gone flat out. It is neck and neck as we go into the final corner. Once again, however, the GT4 has to go the long way in order to avoid on-track hazards. They're going to want to put as many dice down as they can and take the inside for turn order. They are going to roll those one by one. The break is good. Coasting so far is good. The two is good, the three is good, and the four was good. Have they done enough? The R4 has the opportunity to cut to the inside. Uh, 
for coasting out. And they're going to need to be in fourth gear to overtake. Third, second, and a coast puts them one space ahead. They have all the focus in the world. They're going to roll one by one. There's a hazard on the break and a hazard on their first coast. So let's think. They, they're going to risk this, which was fine. And they're going to risk the two, which was fine. And then they're going to pay for the remainder to overtake the GT4. The R4 has to think about how it wants to tackle the next set of corners as it breaks down to second gear. Coast, coast, coast. And then three, four puts them in the long space at the hairpin. Uh, they're going to roll those one by one. A uh, hazard on the two and a hazard on their next coast. They don't have enough to pay for all of these dice, so they're going to risk the coast, which was their third hazard. Dry tyres, wet weather, recipe for spins. Can the GT4 capitalise? Uh, it is going to coast, coast, and drop to second. And then it has to emerge in first gear. And then it can plot down another dice just in case it gets that far. It's going to go one by one. Hazard on the first coast, which means it's going to be risky for the GT4. They're going to pay for that break. And they are then going to risk the one and risk the coast. They're good, they do get around. Running out of focus to pay for anything though, but they are in the lead as we go into the next round. They are going to uh, continue in first gear and then mm, I think emerge in third. Or do they want to hope for distance? and roll those flat out. Let's see. Let's get some focus back. One hazard. The R4 has an opportunity to finish in higher gear and overtake. Um, if it goes like this, it can emerge in third gear. And that is its best course of action, one by one. One is good. One hazard on a coast, two hazards on coasts. Enough focus to pay for gears two and three. Side by side, we are again. Next round, the R4 needs to break down to first gear in order to coast on through. And emerge in third gear. They're going to take the inside, force the GT4 to go the long way, but how far through that run can they get? One hazard on the brake, one hazard on the coast. I think they're going to risk these because they're in a low gear. That's good. And then pay for the last two. Can the GT4 do anything to keep up. If they want turn order, they are going to have to do something like that. Um, let's see how far through that they get. The one is good. The coasts are good. The two is good. The three is a hazard and they will pay one focus to secure fourth gear as they come around the outside back into first place. Things are going to get a little chaotic. They have to break down to second and then into first. And then the best they can do is go for distance. Um, how far through that can they get? Or do they want to end on the corner? The 
two is good, the one is good, coasts are good, and coasts are good. Uh, what can the R4 do? The R4 can break down to one now, and then coast through, and then emerge out here in third gear. Not a lot of focus left. How far can it get? The one is good. The coast is good, as are all the coasts. The two to overtake is good, and the three is good, and that has to be the victory for the R4. It's got one corner to navigate, and that's going to be breaking down to first gear, and then coasting out and emerging in second gear. Um, does it want to go flat out? Perhaps not. Maybe it should. It is a rally car after all. No hazards to worry about as it crosses the line in second gear for a victory. The R4 proving beyond all reasonable doubt that rally cars are better than race cars. But if you disagree, I encourage you to find a combination of dashboard and track that shows off just how good the GT cars can be against more unfamiliar competition. Just be sure to switch back to the right dashboard before your next race. Unless you want a challenge, of course.